What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher and today we are back on the 1939 Lincoln Zephyr four-door to two-door coupe conversion chopped. That is what's happening behind me. It's a uh, V12 Lincoln V12 Lincoln Zephyr. It's uh, my personal dream car and we are doing all the metal work on it right now. So in this video, we are gonna go over door tops, how to fit the frame. We're gonna get the, uh, the rest of the structure done on the car as well as see the full profile of the side. First things first, we gotta get that roof cut off and start building out our door tops. All right, quick little intermission here, guys. Uh, before we get started in the video, I'm really excited. I'm going to Texas September 15th to 17th. This is San Antonio, Texas. We're gonna go to Bare Bones Garage, Christian Sosa, Sosa Metal Works, as well as my friend Chris Galan from San Antonio. Bare Bones Garage is his place. We're all gonna do a metal shaping and chop class together, 15th to 17th. You can go online right now at sosametalworks.com and you can sign up. There's only 12 spots available. They're gonna go like that. And I cannot wait to see you guys there. We're gonna have so much fun. We've got Friday night, we're gonna have a barbecue. There's gonna be a bunch of hot rods that are gonna come out at Bare Bones Garage. Then Saturday all day, Sunday all day, we are going to chop a super sweet little Model A sedan as well as do hand metal shaping techniques. We're gonna go over shrinking, stretching, forming, planishing, English wheel, kind of a little bit of everything. Um, as a uh, beginner metal shapings course for anybody who's interested. So hopefully I'll see you there and let's get into this video. Okay, so chopped this off. Um, a little bit of the roof section can be kind of left. I cut it this way because uh, Lone Wolf's chop rods, these guys, Tony um, and uh, Nomi, they just did one and um, they cut it that way. And it just makes sense to me as well because I'm gonna use this piece of the front door top um, up to this point. So that's kind of a natural place to break it. And then also, uh, why not give yourself a little bit extra roof skin to play with? Um, every inch counts when, uh, you know, you're trying to not have the giant panel that you're wheeling. You know, if you can have a slightly smaller panel because we left an extra six inches on here, then um, that's a good thing. The next thing that has to happen here now is that I, I need to tip these door pillars in. Um, the actual door itself, because these outer pillars, the A pillars got tipped in slightly when we were aligning these, the doors also have to be. So I'm gonna have to make a cut in here that allows this to tip in a little bit, as well as the same thing at the back. And I'll likely tighten up this pillar by pie cutting this way to have more of a flowy door top. Um, but that's, that's sort of next, make these aligned with the new plane of the door jam.
Okay, what do you guys think? It's chopped. That's what I think. <laughs> I actually really like it now. It's a, it is exactly kind of what I expected. In the end, it's just a heavy chop that looks sinister and cool and I love it. So I'm gonna keep going. Um, I've got to this point where we've tipped things in like this. You saw how we tip that in by slicing a little bit here and actually tipping it in. Um, put this door top on. We did the exact same thing back here by slicing and tipping, but this inner structure and this door piece, I think I'm gonna lose them because what I'm gonna end up doing is using the uh, door top from the rear door of the same side and I'm gonna kind of do this um, and that's gonna be the shape I'm gonna use. So if I'm gonna use this piece, I'm gonna use the structure that corresponded with this piece as well and weld that in here and this piece in here. Um, I'm not sure exactly what obstacles I will have to overcome to do that, but that's the, uh, the next idea anyway, is cut this back out, this inner structure. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take it right out, I think for now. Um, yeah. I could tip this forward and then start flowing it in, but I'm not sure if that's the way to go. I know I've seen somebody before slice this and tip it forward, but I just think it's too extreme. Like what we're trying to do here might be a bit too extreme. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm gonna start though, that's the goal. All right, so this is a very critical time when you are chopping a car, um, and this is transferable for all chops. Right now, when we're fitting door tops and looking at the structure of a door uh, frame, it's like the time to dial in your pieces and the chop is right now. It's really, it's really easy to just be like, oh, it looks good, and like start welding stuff in. And, uh, and, but this is the time to exercise patience because the tiniest adjustment um, can create a lot of work or save you a lot of work in the future. Um, what I'm talking about is this piece that I'm putting in here, if I were to take a little bit off of the door frame here, this whole piece would tip in. You know, if I, if I were to uh, take a little bit off the bottom, then it would change the slope of this door channel. Uh, you know, like the angle that they meet, the flow of the body, like you kind of have to consider all those things as you're putting in these pieces that are gonna set the tone for the car, for the chop, for the style, and, uh, and for the fit of welding it all back together and making pieces and doing what we've got to do to actually finish the whole job. So, um, you know, where does the door frame line up to below, like this little channel here, does that meet up to there? I think that on this particular car, we're pretty lucky that 
um, you know, even though this is a part from the rear door and this is a part from the front door, uh, you know, this is rear door, this is front door, they are manufactured in similar measurement, although um, all lines on this car are completely organic. There's nothing totally straight anywhere. Like everything's got a flow. So, um, you know, like even, even that, because, you know, some of these pieces may taper smaller and be fatter, uh, you have to consider the width of all these pieces and where do you line it up? Do you line it up with outer body sheet metal or do you line it up with inner door structure? Um, you know, I, was, I touched on that a little bit before in the door channel, uh, saying that, you know, the structure to me is very important because the outer sheet metal can be manipulated. And that is true most cases, but is not always the best thing because perhaps this, perhaps this door top is better off lined up on the outside material because of how um, drastic a cut would be to allow that to flow. You know, like on, on the inside material, it might be easier to, to line things up. But I mean, it almost doesn't matter for this because we're so close. But um, yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about fitting because it is very, very important at this stage. You know, like if this line seems to peak down a little bit, then we have to lower here, or perhaps this actually has to come down a little bit. After I welded these posts, I, you know, off camera, I actually grabbed the roof and I kind of pulled down on each side to, to just barely bend this back a little bit because I was noticing that um, the flow was kind of going up a little. So there is wiggle room and you just gotta, gotta know where to go with it, I suppose. Um, yeah, so hopefully, hopefully I've answered a couple questions on uh, the chop that you guys might be having. But yeah, right now, take your time. Like I'm not, I'm, it's, it's like art, you can't rush it. You have to just take it step by step and change your perspective to, uh, to see, you know, places that may or may not need more work. The fit and execution of a chop how it's cut, how it's reassembled. That I think is what kind of makes or breaks um, chopped cars. So I'm just gonna keep going. I'm pretty happy with, uh, with the look of it right now. I've got a couple more fine adjustments that I, I would like to make. Um, this door top, when it sits, it kind of peaks out a little bit. So I'll have to shave a little bit off of this end of the inside to bring that back. Um, and tip this in. So just, just looking at it from all angles and just, you know, assessing the flow will kind of tell you your next move uh, when it comes to chopping. So uh, I'm just gonna keep going. I'm gonna try and get as much camera footage as possible so that you guys can really see what I'm doing and thinking right now. Um, let's just keep at it. All right, so got the post tacked on here. Um, it mostly lines up pretty dang good. The inner structure is mostly lined up, not quite on this side, but what I've noticed with these doors is that this, um, this line and this line from front to rear, it does peak. So that will have to be replaced with a straight piece. Like I'll have to do a, a long weld all the way down and put a straight piece in there. I'll have to do the same thing here. 
Um, as far as the window channel itself, I think it's all lining up pretty good, but you would imagine that this would peak as well. So we're gonna have to take a close look at that, um, see if any modification has to be done there. But next up, I'm gonna tack in this next piece. I'm not 100% sure whether or not I'm going to be able to use the corner here. This is the uh, far rear corner of the roof. If this curve suits our purposes, then, uh, then hurrah. But if it actually doesn't look right, then we'll have to make that piece from scratch with a hammer form. I don't know. I kind of think it's too big. I think that radius might be a little bit too large. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's passable, but I think a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller radius at the back. The front one is this size too. It's actually even a little bit tighter at the front than this. I guess it's not that big of a difference. But this still doesn't go all the way. So I think we got to tighten this up regardless because this doesn't actually get to that angle. So we're gonna hammer form it. Let's let's make a hammer form. I think wooden hammer form, try and do something easy. Hopefully it's not gonna to take too much time and we'll try and make a piece. Hopefully it's even like a piece that could be universal for both sides, like flip it for that side. I don't see why not. All right, we're gonna give it a go. Okay, so <laughs> I think I did a back step. I started making this as the lower hammer form. So I would have had a sandwich plate on top. I would have ground this to the radius that um, I made this little template for. The problem I'm foreseeing now is that the amount that I have to grind away um, from the backside to make this the thickness that it needs to be is, is quite a bit. Um, so basically what I'm trying to say is this is too thick of a piece of wood. 
Um, what I have for an idea for the hammer form now is I think I'm going to use a piece of plate on the back side and then also a piece of plywood to make up the thickness. And I think this will be advantageous because I'll grind the plywood for the radius and then I'll have maybe a quarter inch piece of plate on the back side of the ground lower hammer form that will be a solid edge that has this radius in it where I'll be able to actually hammer the last little lip because this actually ends with about a 3 8 thick sheet metal lip that goes up into the window channel. So if I want to recreate that and actually finish this bend over, um, having a steel backer to that hammer form, I think will be awesome. So um, I do think that whatever hammer form I make, I won't have to make a left and right. I think I'll be able to get away with um, just kind of massaging it in both sides because we will have to change this lower piece as well, like I was saying before. Um, anyway, that's what I'm going to do now. I found I've got a bit of plywood over here. I think it's just 5 eighths thick plywood. I'll probably cut a chunk of that off and then I'll either use um, whatever I need here. Let's see. Whatever the thickness between here, or sorry, here and that is. So I might even need 3 eighths thick uh, plate to sandwich this if I use it as the hammer form.
All right, here we go. I just welded a uh, bar to one of these <laughs> tank tops. I think it's gonna be a good shape to try and beat this into here without causing too much kind of damage. I'm also gonna use this high crown hammer as well. Try and fold this over. Let's give it a go. Looks like it's turning over okay. I think this is too big to keep going. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Looks a little flat, but like maybe the wood kind of burned away. Have a look here. We do have enough for our full rollover. We might as well finish what we started here. Yeah, it does feel really flat right in this spot here. Okay, well there it is. I guess, I guess the heat sort of burned it a little bit and caused a flat spot or it didn't quite, I'm not exactly sure why that flat spot exists. Although we did get a lot of shape out of it. Not sure what to do next, whether or not we, cause this obviously isn't good enough. Like it's, it's burning, it's catching on fire, so. I either carve this out of a piece of steel, or perhaps I'm wondering if the um, the homemade hammer, if we could make a profile for it that is that correct, and then just correct this. Is that something that we could do? I don't know. I don't know. Might be tough. Hmm.
All right, here we go again. Let's give this a go. I have a lot more confidence in it this time because uh, there's no wood involved. Wood doesn't like fire, we knew that, but we were hoping to get away with it. Um, for any of you guys that have access to hardwood, you could do this out of hardwood as well. It would have worked much better. And I don't think we would have had to do the, um, the steel if it was made out of hardwood. I've seen lots of guys use hardwood. I just don't have any. So using what I got, we've got ourselves a form. Let's see what we can do here.
Okay, it's been a couple days, so I don't know exactly where I left off, but uh, let's talk about how well that worked. <laughs> These are the pieces that we hammer formed in the stacked plate, CNC cut, <laughs> ground and welded hammer form. Um, you know, like when, when things are this, like have this much shape, it seems like metal is kind of the way to go or, or a hardwood. I, I don't have access to like oak and, and uh, other hardwoods that typically metal shapers would use for bucks like this. Like you could absolutely use like a hardwood and just sand that buck shape and, and use it. But um, <laughs> here's a funny thing. I grabbed like new material to add a little bit of material on the edges here. Um, and recut these kind of off camera. So these plates, I accidentally cut out of 16 gauge. Didn't realize. So these are formed out of 16 gauge. Like I was kind of wondering like, I mean, when you heat stuff up, like it gets softer. So you don't really notice, I guess, but, uh, but these are thick. 16 gauge, <laughs> look at all that shape out of 16 gauge. So metal forms work wicked for this type of stuff. And uh, I'm very happy with the look of it. I think that, uh, I think it really suits, suits the car. And I'll be able to use this piece for both sides. Like it's, it's a symmetrical piece. So um, yeah, I totally, totally dig it. All right, so the piece is trimmed up pretty decent. Let me try and get it back into its spot here. Um, we're close, we're not done yet. So the profile of this piece versus this piece, this piece versus this piece, it's not exactly perfect. So if I, if I line the edge up of the door, or sorry, the window frame to the corner, right here, corner to corner, this doesn't quite line up. Do you see that? So there is a little bit of bumping around I'm going to have to do kind of back and forth to make this profile match this and make this profile match that, but shouldn't be too bad. And once that's matched, then I'll kind of be able to do my final trim and placement. This form piece is dead flat. Like, I mean, absolutely dead flat. So there might be a little bit of kind of uh, a little bit of shape to put in here, maybe maybe just a little bit of crown in this piece just to make it flow with the rest of the door.
All right, well, there it is. We got her done. That piece is put in. I did have to put a little bit of shape into it just to kind of like roll this a little bit, kind of roll that a little bit while keeping this bottom edge kind of straight. Um, the nice thing about the 16 gauge is there's a little bit more to grind. So um, I was able to grind it out nice and smooth. All this stuff is gonna take a little bit of Bondo. It's not absolutely perfect, but uh, I'm very happy with the results and especially making that form. I think it's really cool that you can do such a harsh shape and like finding out that it was 16 gauge, like that's just crazy. You know, it's like this thick of a roll in a tight reverse curve. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool, we made it happen. Zephyr's one step closer. Thanks everybody for watching, make it custom. Appreciate you guys. I'm glad that you guys are as excited as I am about the Zephyr build. We're gonna keep on picking away at it. And uh, until the next one, don't forget to like, click subscribe, hit notifications. Comment, put a comment in there, it helps the channel. Um, if you want custom crew memberships, five bucks a month, 15% off at the merch store, which is japanscustoms.com. Don't forget the Mother Tucker hammers. Those ones are, uh, they're ready to ship. They're on the site. They're free shipping in US and Canada right now. Um, everybody have a great one. Catch you next time. <laughs>